So exactly one week before the semester began, I had made a decision to quit my job. And I'm not gonna lie, that decision was a miscalculation on my part. At the time, I decided to walk out in dramatic fashion just because lately at the time, things have just been building up to being too much for me to handle. The culture that that place was really becoming was one that I no longer wanted to be a part of. And I don't wanna sound self-centered here, but like I could just see so many flaws in the work environment that nobody really cared to correct. So even though I guess you could say I hit my breaking point, I still wouldn't feel how much this decision would impact my life until the following weeks and even months that followed. In hindsight, I shouldn't have quit the job in that fashion. But also, your boy stands on business and I stand on that decision. I don't know if that sounds hypocritical or that I'm like walking both sides of the fence, but I believe both can exist. So I knew I could survive off of, you know, the weeks of checks I had built up and I knew that I could always go to Instacart if your boy ran out of options. So boom, your boy walks out and he quits the job. And for a week, I was just mentally preparing for the upcoming semester, but you're gonna have to follow the timeline. So I quit the job a week before the semester begins, but all the way up until a day before the semester begins, this is the part where real life gets tough to talk about on the internet. And I'm already somebody who doesn't run to the internet to just explain my problems just like that. But an incident pops off literally the night before the morning of the first day of school. I really want to be fully open and honest with this situation, but this is probably the one situation where I'm choosing to be loyal and to protect those around me. The situation that occurred happened like at 12.30 a.m. in the morning and I was scheduled for class at 9.30 a.m. To add some context to the situation, I'm okay, I was okay. I can't say the same for other parties involved. I'm always gonna make the decision that's best for me and ideally that includes the people around me who are my people, but I'm only one person. I'm only one young man in this world and I have no power and control or even influence over anybody. I can offer my recommendations, I can offer suggestions, advice, but it's really to, up to the other party, whoever I'm talking to, to take that advice or suggestions however they may. Yeah, this is like very difficult. And thank God for the power of editing because hopefully this will make more sense in the editing room than it does trying to explain it. But we're probably gonna put a pin in this situation and maybe return maybe in a couple of years from now to just... Maybe when I'm in a place where I can feel confident about being fully open and honest about this incident and this whole situation at large, maybe I'll come back on the internet and just tell my story. But for now, I don't really have the words to truly articulate that situation. To explain that situation would have to require me explaining society's perception and then also just the reality of the situation for what it really is. And to do that in this video, I would have to be here for a while. So maybe one day when I'm in a place where I can speak on this more openly and freely, I'll come back and tell this story. But for now, I think it's best that I kind of just deal with this offline. So boom, the semester begins. And in my previous video, I had dropped that video at the halfway mark for the semester. And in that video, I kind of just talked about it being a big adjustment period returning to college. I really wanted to stay out the way, not cause any problems, and just kind of like stick to myself and to just stick to the game plan, which was getting this school stuff done. Now I had four classes this semester, but without a doubt, the most challenging course was broadcast audio. Shout out to Mr. Kittrich. I'm one of the ones who still, even in college, calls their professors Mr. Insert last name here. I don't really address them by their first name. For me, it's like a respect thing. And I've noticed throughout the semester, I was like one of the rare ones to actually address my professors by Mr. Insert last name here. But shout out to Mr. Kittrich for being my broadcast audio teacher. I knew that every day whenever I went in his class, I was always going to be constantly challenged to just learn the material and then put it into practice with whatever projects we were working on. A couple of my favorite projects that we did, it was like a radio segment where everybody in the class, and it was only like six of us, had like a 30 second spot segment and in these little 30 second spots and segments we would come up with like little commercials and ad placements to just advertise whatever we came up with so when everybody came together and put their segments together it was like a two to three minute segment of 
everybody just contributed into one big, large project. Another fun project we had was finding a children's book and then recording ourselves reading the children's book. We then would take our audio recording and then add background music and sound effects to just basically create a one to two minute short little reading of us reading that children's book. Another fun project we had was finding about a one to three minute, whether it be commercial or movie scene. And we would take that clip and then just do the same thing like we did for the children's book. We would find background music and add sound effects. We could even have the option of just re-recording with our own voices what was said in those commercials, or we could just come up with our own dialogue and stuff like that. And it was just a cool process and a cool thing to like experience and to just practice my skills. But by far for broadcast audio, my favorite project that we did was our journalism project. For this project, we actually had the task of just finding somebody in our personal lives and scheduling an interview. For me, I reached out to my former coworker at Kroger, Miss Monica Shields, for my interview. And she was kind enough to say yes. So she came on campus and we actually recorded the interview. It was like a 42 minute interview, but editing it down, it ended up being like 12 minutes, 30 seconds, I want to say. So I just want to say shout out to you, Miss Monica Shields. I know she watches like all these videos and she's always like tuning in to whatever I got going on. So I really do appreciate your support just for that project and just as I continue to make these videos. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So yeah, that was broadcast audio. It was a pretty great class. I think I ended up with a 90.9% for this class. So your boy tried his best and I was pretty satisfied with that grade. Now, I also got to do some cool things through my other classes being a broadcast media technology major. Shout out to Mr. Thomas. I had him for two of my classes in my semester in 2020, but I also had him for two of my classes this semester. Those two classes were media writing and TV production one, and those kind of intertwined with each other when it came to some of these events and projects we would work on. But through these classes, I was able to get plenty of experience just doing broadcast media technology work. I got plenty of practice writing scripts, whether it be for videos of the Netflix top five that us as a campus would upload, or even what would the weather be for that day. And then just general scripts of when it came down to interviewing people for certain projects, I would just have to come up with certain questions tailored to the person and whatever project we were interviewing them for. Earlier in the semester, one of the first events we did was an event called Winterfest. At this event, it was all the different programs that our college has to offer. So we basically just pulled up and pulled some of the representatives from those programs aside to interview them. Another event we did early in the semester was covering the women's basketball game. And me being a fan of basketball already, when it came time to just working the camera, I already had kind of a natural instinct of how to follow the action. At an event where basketball, my favorite game or sport was taking place, it was just a fun early just event to participate in. Another event we did was Athleticon. And for Athleticon, we would bring the men's baseball and the women's softball teams in and basically have like two to three minute press conferences for each one. One by one, we would bring them in and ask them five questions, just generally based off of their season, the team, their goals for the season. And just, it was a fun experience to just hear all the different perspectives and just answers that they gave. But for me personally, we're about to get to the biggest highlight of the whole semester here. Without a doubt, it had to be the film challenge. And the film challenge consisted of like five, maybe six teams. Each team would go on stage and then draw like a category of what type of film that they would make. For us, my team, we drew movie trailer. Shout out to Noah, shout out to Andres and Olivia. Like this was just an amazing team. I couldn't have chosen uh, a better team to work with. First, I got to say shout out to Noah. Noah, I met on my first day of school. He introduced himself to me and we just been rocking it ever since. Also, I got to shout out my guy, Andrus. Andrus is a guy in my TV production class and Andrus is just so cool. He's just a nice, respectful, chill, down to earth guy who whenever I was around him, I could always rely on us just having a chill, easygoing conversation. And then lastly, shout out to Olivia. And I knew I wanted Olivia on our team when for our media writing class, it was maybe like 15 of us, but it was only four of us who had turned in this press release assignment. Olivia had turned hers in and just, we were going through them and hers just looked superficial, professional. So from that moment for the film challenge, I knew that Olivia would be somebody who wouldn't mess around and that would help us get the job done. So we recruited Olivia and she said, yeah. Everybody in this group pulled their own weight and contributed equal amounts to the film and how everything was made and came to be. And for just this being my first film debut, I am just so proud and happy with 
how this crew came to be and the product we ended up turning in. Our movie was titled Unlucky, so yeah, maybe I'll leave the link in the description somewhere for you guys to go check it out. So my last class that I haven't talked about was actually Introduction to Logic. This class was separate from my BMT program, but this class was, dare I say, my favorite class of all time. Now, in Introduction of Logic, we would basically just analyze logical statements and break them down into equations. It's such a difficult class to explain, and I say that, and then I'm gonna sound stupid by saying I can't recommend taking this class enough. This is a class that me personally, like, I wish I could retake, and if I'm somehow in the place where I'm able to, I would like to retake this class maybe like every five to ten years. This class really just encouraged me to just see arguments and statements, whether they be generated or just coming from people themselves, and to just hear what they're saying, analyze what they're saying, and to see if this argument actually makes sense or is valid or not. And shout out to the teacher, Mr. Andrew Erickson, um, just an amazing professor. He made things just so easy to understand where in this class, if you're not on your toes, if you're not really paying attention, it could be very difficult for you to keep up. But just through working with him, just being his student, I always wanted him to know that I was always ready and down to learn whatever he was ready to teach us. Even though this class was difficult at times, I never gave up on myself because I could always count on him being an amazing professor. He was always willing to work with you whether you missed a class session and you needed to reschedule a quiz at a certain time, or he would even just go the extra step of explaining something and why it was that way he explained it. I don't know him personally, and I only know him on like a professional professor to student level. And maybe this is complete recency bias, but in all of my educational career, starting from kindergarten to this second semester of college, I 100% feel confident with saying this on camera. This is my favorite teacher. This is my favorite class. And those two reasons alone contributed to making this my favorite semester and time period of being in school. Shout out to you, Mr. Erickson. Uh, like even just taking this introduction to logic class makes me want to enroll myself into another class that he teaches, even if it doesn't go towards my college credits. I just will always look back at this semester and specifically this class with the best memories. And like I said earlier, I just wish I could relive this experience again. And if I'm able to, maybe I'll try to even take this class again in the future, even though I have no reason to whatsoever. I'm kind of referencing the beginning of the video here, but I always had this dark cloud in the background that I kind of had to navigate around. But the biggest loss that I took this semester was the loss of my cat, Bella. Rest in peace to Bella. Bella was an amazing cat, a sweet girl. She was a bigger cat for, you know, just being that tall in height wise of an animal. She basically had a mass that kind of was affecting her breathing. It all just happened so quick. Um, about a week or two beforehand, she kind of gave the signs of it was her time. She began hiding under the couch. She even went like on the roof and like off to a side where it was kind of hard to bring her back inside. She wouldn't really move from her comfort spots and within a week or two, every single day she began eating less and less and at a certain point i don't think she ate for a couple of days straight and we were feeding her of course like that's our cat you know we feed our animals here but all the signs kind of were pointing towards her not doing well so when she was at the vet it was kind of revealed to us that she probably is going to be suffering the more that she continues to live so the decision was made to put her down and to put her to sleep and yeah i don't know really what the right expression is but just like a band-aid being ripped off you know she was here for one month and then within a few weeks i'm now without her and animals have always been a big part of my life and household uh i've grown up having both dogs and cats and Bella is on the Mount Rushmore for the greatest animal pet that one could ask for. She started off being the neighbor's pet, but through time she then adopted us. 
And even after the neighbors would move away, Bella would continue to stay with us for the years that followed. Bella really had a special place in this household. And it's just the little things like exiting the bathroom and no longer seeing her like on her cat tree or just chilling in the hallway. Or whether it be just returning home and just seeing her out front ready to come inside. Or even with our other cat Nala, when we would give her treats, you could hear Bella just thumping down the stairs, coming all the way downstairs up into the kitchen just to get some treats as well. Bella was just an amazing cat and her presence really always made me smile whenever she would pull up and allow me to pet her or play with her. Dang, I just... Shout out to Bella. I love you, Bella. And you definitely are missed and will forever be remembered. So I guess this is where we begin to wrap up the semester. And I'm going to like pick this up with the final three weeks remaining. Our baseball team was actually playing at the Mud Hen Stadium downtown for our like professional minor league team. But our college baseball team was just using their field to play. So us broadcast students were also granted access to cover the event. For this event, I got to work with a team of three others. Those others consisted Cole, who ran audio for us. Cole is a chill dude. It was nice to meet him this semester. Also got to work with Mr. Eric. Eric is an extremely talented cameraman. I kind of wish I would have worked with him more throughout the semester. Just being with him on this one project, I was able to just learn so much just about how to go about capturing video. And also got to work with Mr. Kevin. Kevin was an intern for Mr. Thomas and just him being a part of our classes like the last month of school, he was just a really cool and also chill guy. Whenever I would speak to Kevin, it was always just a chill conversation. We could just chop it up about whatever was going on for the class or just around campus and just his personality and presence was always one that was welcomed around me. But yeah, for this team of four, with myself included, it was just an amazing crew to work with all day at this event. But when this event was over, it was the last weekday of the week, and we had just two weeks left of school left. And I literally had a moment at the event when we were about to leave. I was just kind of like off to the side, and I was like, oh my god. We're actually doing this. We're actually completing and at the end of this semester. Through all the obstacles in my life, I kind of knew I would get through the semester, but to actually live through it and to complete the semester was just a big hurdle and a goal that I could check off my bucket list. So the last two weeks was basically just getting through those final classes in preparation for the exams. And that's that. That's the end of the semester. For my exams for broadcast audio, I got a 48 out of 50. For introduction to logic, I got a 191 out of 200. And for Mr. Thomas, we didn't really have any end semester exams. We kind of just had group discussions, just proving to him that we had learned everything that he had taught us throughout the whole semester. Before I close the chapter of this semester, I just want to give a couple shout outs to uh, those who I have and haven't shouted out. Like again, shout out to my film team, shout out to Noah, Olivia, Andrus. Shout out to the crew that I worked with at the Mud Hens game, Kevin, Eric, and Cole. There was even a couple people throughout the semester who had asked me to be a participant in their projects. And my mindset was to always say yes. I was always down to just do more outside of class activities that would just gain me more experience. And I just want to say shout out to my broadcast audio class. Everybody in that class is extremely talented. And I really look forward to seeing where each of us will be at in about five to 10 years from now. Now that class consisted of my guy Noah, shout out to Bryce, Haley, Logan, and also Drew. And a couple other people I've had interactions with, shout out to Josh, shout out to Mike, and shout out to my guy Russ. I got to work with Russ. Um, it was just me and him on a crew that went to like the dental program. And we basically captured interviews and B-roll to put together like a little two minute promo package. And there's just so many more just friendly faces I would see on a day to day basis that I just want to say, along with everybody I've shouted out and named teachers included, I just want to thank everybody for just making this a special, amazing, great semester for me. My takeaway from this semester was just having fun doing something that I wanted to pursue as my career and everybody who I worked with on a project or just got to talk to and get to know you guys really impacted and shaped this semester in one way or another. So again, I just want to say one final thank you. Now that the semester is complete, your boy is focused on working a job. All semester long, I've been getting by just surviving off Instacart. But Instacart was a job that basically just allowed me to focus on school, but also provided the flexibility of being able to work whenever I had the time to. 
And through working Instacart all semester, it kind of put a lot of wear and tear on the car. But working with Instacart only got me so far. And earlier throughout the semester, I went to a couple of temp agencies to try to find mainly first shift options that would like center around my school schedule. But of the three different temp agencies I tapped in with, none of them had any options available for me. So ideally, me being an early 20 year old man, my ideal workspace is just warehouse environments. To me, that's just where the money is at. But towards the end of the semester, I knew that once summer hit, I was gonna have a free and available schedule. So now that the semester is over and school is a thing of the past and it's now behind me, I am now open and available to work full time. So I've now recently found a job and I'm, I don't know, this is kind of like a weird thing with me, but on YouTube, I'm kind of just hesitant to say, hey, this is the name of my new job. The description of the job is for Instacart, I was delivering groceries and I would say I'm now delivering just on a different level. What got me this job was just talking to a couple of my classmates, shout out to Andrus and also shout out to Mr. Connor Carden, working for this company that us three work for. A big reason why I chose this company was their tuition assistance. You know, I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that I'm there long term. And this is the thing, like this job, I actually do and have enjoyed since I've been working there. And I could see myself working there for the next two, three years or until I'm actually phasing into my career. So now this job is now my full time focus. A big goal of mine this summer is just to pay off my tuition. It's about 3000 plus. So I'm really just going to be in grind mode in order to return for the fall semester, not being in any debt from this spring semester. So yeah, I've really just been enjoying my new job. Um, it was really important for me just starting out to just build and establish that relationship with my HR and my bosses. And I don't know, I really do feel happiness as far as what my career is and will be, what my job currently is, and also just what's in store for the future. So when we talk about what's next for your boy, James Icy, you'll probably have to stick around and find out. But no matter what I got going on in life or where I'm at, it all falls under the same umbrella of just putting myself in positions to continue to better myself. I think I got everything off my chest that I've been holding on to this semester, whether it be going in depth or just vaguely touching on some things that have been on my mind. So yeah, I think that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit that like and subscribe button down below. I've been James Icy, and I'll see you next time. Peace.